but lose 2-1 at St. Johnson. The phone lines are open now. Lots of calls coming in. 0808 17 17 700. Rangers legend Barry Ferguson is with us. Barry, all the talk is about what's going to happen. Giovanni, is he going to go? Is he going to stay? Seven points behind Celtic. Yeah, when you say that, it's really disappointing. In terms of yesterday's game, Paul, yep, first half hour, Rangers had the vast majority of possession, but if I'm being honest, I thought it was very pedestrian and lethargic. I know they created a few chances. Zakala off the bar. Um, Lundstrom, Lundstrom w- yep. with a show, show like should have took a, um, a pass through um, earlier. Um, but then when St. Johnson scored the goal, I thought St. Johnson were the, were the better team, certainly in the, the second half. So to go seven points behind at this stage in the season is is really disappointing. Um, you could see it with the, the manager's reaction after the game in his interview. He was very honest and open. Um, there was just no aggression. And where's no the leadership. fight? Yeah, that first goal, for example, where John Lundstrom loses the well, ball. Well, do you know what? I can go through it. There's four phases. John Lundstrom um, is going towards Sakala. Sakala's no making a move of him John Lundstrom I put it into the corner and then I have a pop at Sakala but anyway he doesn't St Johnson break a poor clearance from Tavernier it goes into the box a poor clearance um, from Ben Davies and then the ball goes out to the, the wing back at St Johnson Brown and for me Ryan Kent ambles out you've got to go out there and take one in the face or take one in the, the sore ones um, and he, he hits an unbelievable shot into the, the, the back of the net. And then after that, you could see the confidence surge through St. Johnson. And then I thought in the second half, um, St. Johnson thoroughly deserved the, the the victory, if I'm being honest with you. People asking though about Rangers, Mark, you've been around for a long time in the media. What mm. do you sense is happening? He looked a bit bewildered, didn't he, when they went two down? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I think if Rangers were going to part company and take that decision that they would have made it already so I think he will be in charge for Wednesday night whether that's right or wrong is certainly something that we're going to debate uh, tonight but uh, I've defended Giovanni in this programme Paul many many times but having watched that yesterday having been at the game um, I think it's now the end of the road I think it's uh, it's I think that it's the end of the road for Giovanni um, at Rangers and that's not something I take any pleasure in saying and ultimately it's a shame because the manager carries a can that's the way football is but it shouldn't be him. Some of those players, really, I don't know how they can look themselves in the mirror. Really, you know, the performance levels, not just yesterday, yeah. but it's just not good enough. They, they, I don't think enough of them care, Paul. That's the bottom line. And then the manager cares, but he just he, he's not able to get the best out of the players now and ultimately he'll carry the can. But I think they'll go on Wednesday night in front of 50,000 supporters going to be interested because they're not happy. Rangers supporters are not happy and rightly so. So the manager's going to get it. If the players don't start well, then the board will end up getting it. Um, but I, I think if it was going to happen, it would have happened first thing this morning. Hearts on Wednesday. And that's mm. what happens, isn't it? It's the fans eventually have the power because they let the, eventually the board don't want to get the stick. That's what happens. Everyone likes Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. He took Rangers to a Europa League final five months ago. And Barry, it must have... I haven't asked you this yet. Mm. When you saw the team and he drops Arfield and Stephen Davis. Were you not surprised that? Then, then I still look at the three that are in the, the midfield, Paul. That it's not of their bad players. Lundstrom, Sands playing in his natural position, and, and Tillman. I mean, in terms of Tillman, I thought at times he looked bored on the pitch when he when he lost mm. the, the the ball. Look, there's no doubt in the guy's got unbelievable technical ability. But has he got the fight? But you've got to do for me. You've got to do the the, the dirty side of the game, um, and that's what a number of Rangers players aren't doing at this moment in time. And look. He cut a, a frustrated figure on the sidelines, Gio. You could see that. Um, and on the pitch, just not enough players playing at the, the levels that they should be playing at and the standards they should uh, be playing at a club like Rangers. And you're going to come under severe criticism. The fans ain't happy. And there's only one person that carries a can for that, and it, it's the manager. Um, I think it's a collective responsibility, if I'm being honest with you. It's not just the manager and the coaching staff players have got to take responsibility 